also go into where? Bravo only is the only one that goes to the clear well. Alpha is dedicated to the clear fire because we pump copon, copon into the alpha and clear well. That is correct. So the ram mag basically is the truck to run that into the steam room and just flood all the truck stuff out there basically. I mean, it would work, but you'd be constantly cleaning. Constant yeah, you wouldn't get near as long on the multimedia clippings. All right. So we've got two clear well pumps. They are going to the multimedia clippings. When we say multimedia filter, what do we mean? What are, what's it like inside it? Why is it? Like a polisher? It is not like a polisher. Different course or sizes, sand, gravel. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I think aggregate, aggregate, something like that is what they like to use for filter. So it's got three layers in it, and the as the water flows through, the, the first layer catches the bigger stuff, and then you got a layer that's finer. So the stuff that made it through that gets to that, and then the stuff that made it through that gets to the next. So each layer has a chance of catching a smaller level of grain. So usually you have like what they call green sand and anthracite. Anthracite? Eh? No, that's a type of coal. I'm, I'm making up words. It's kind of like a coal. It's a charcoal type base that's then you got gravel at the very bottom. So basically it's like our filter bed down here. It's a backing pump down here. So you could do all this just by having the finest level of thing. You could just fill the whole thing up with sand. But what would happen was that you instead of having three layers where it's doing it, it'll do all its business in one layer, and then it would get clogged up real fast, and you'd be backwashing it all the time. So, as the layers get dirty, then the differential pressure goes up, and at 10 psi, you got to take it out and backwash it, or you do it on hours most of the time, don't you? Well, they're doing it on hours. I mean, used to, like I said, we've done it at 10 psi. Now they're doing it every 24 hours. 24 hours. But I mean, I still do it by DP. If it gets up to 10 psi, then you should go ahead and do it. And I think 10 is the alarm. So if, if you get a DP alarm on it, you should go ahead and take it out of service and backwash it, no matter what the hours are. If it gets around 8, 9, I do it. Service water tank, you've got the backwash pumps. And so when you take one out of service, then it takes water out of the service tank, flows it backwards across the sand and the aggregate and the gravel, and it knocks that stuff loose and sends it down the drain. Makes the clear well pumps start and stop. Uh, service water tank uh, level. That is correct. Service water tank level. You know the range? Like 30, 35, 8, and. Kicks on at 35.5, and when's it kick off? 
I don't know why you think it's 0.3 higher on both of them than I do. Uh, and then how how full is full? 37.8. It will never ever show 37.4. It will get up to 37.3 and then start putting however much you're putting through your multimedial filters on the ground. How much is that? That's what, 600 gallons a minute each? This is a number that you can actually change. You can type, the, type in whatever you want there. But in general, we want to keep it at whatever the hell the chemists, the chemists left it at, in part because we don't turn over so good with them because they don't turn over at the same time. So if we go changing shit, it gets lost. Uh, and in part because there is a tote that is pumping. Hang on. Color change. Color change. There is a tote that takes water off the surface water uh, pumps and transports from that tote to the clear well. And uh, the amount, this does not look at this 600 gallons a minute. This is just on or off. So if you go tweaking these so you're not getting 600 gallons a minute, then you're throwing off how much of the chemical they're using. It's not the end of the world, but it's not as great as it should be. What is the chemical? Sorry. It is come off the surface water tanks and we go to surface water pumps. And the surface water pump has a pressure control pump, pressure control valve, which is effectively a research valve. Goes back out to the tank. So this guy is what's main it, maintaining that 120 psi, which I think is actually slightly higher right at the pump, right? It's like 135. Eh, eh, whatever. All right. Yeah, so the pressure on the pressure unit? Yeah. Yeah, about 135. Okay. So when we start using a bunch of surface water somewhere, then the pressure goes down because you, you open up a valve somewhere else. So this pressure goes down and then this valve, the research valve, pinches off to drive that pressure back up to where it was. And at a certain point, the research valve shut all the way, and you don't have any more control. The pump's just doing all it can. Check valve. And there's two of these sets up setups. And there's also two surface water tanks. And you can arrange the valves in such a way that you're only drawing off one surface tank and recircling back to it. And that the other surface water tank could be completely drained. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but somewhere around 29.5, somewhere in the 29s, then you lose your surface water pump permit. Okay, so this is a 550,000 gallon tank. And the top 100,000 is available for surface water. And the bottom is reserved for fire water. And the way they reserved it, that by actually 
pumping in the surface water pump suction. It is piped in 25 feet up. tank. You've got the main diesel fire pump. And then in the room with the electric fire pump, you've got jockey pump. Because it is way easier to kick on and off that little guy than it is to start and stop this 4160 volt pump. And the two tanks are cross connected on the suction side of the fire pumps. going. All right. So what all we use surface water for? Slaking water. Say again? FDD tank. chain. You actually do use it all the time oh, yeah. in the drag chain yeah, right. because it's got little spray valves on the chain that are supposed to get it, keep the sprockets from getting clogged, as well as emergency makeup for the uh, bottom ash drag chain. That FGD tank is the lion's share of the water we're using. Using 50 gallons a minute through six atomizers, so that's 300 plus gallons a minute. The slaking water is like in the 150 to 200 gallons a minute kind of ballpark, and it kicks on and off depending on tank level and how much slurry we're using. There's one more big user. Okay, there's a. We have sealed water. Out of the river water, we got seal water at the surf water pumps, we got seal water at uh, sump three, probably some other little Sorry, sumps. Pump. Say again? Sorry, Sorry, pump. Pump. So, MPD. hang on, uh, there is a, a high pressure surface water pump in the turbine building. It has got considerably less volume, considerably less gallons a minute that can go through it than the big pump. But it is kicking up from 120 pounds to 180 pounds, and that is what provides enough pressure to the slurry pump and the FGD pump seal water. And as well as the hose taps all the way up the boiler. Like you wouldn't have 120 pounds, I don't know what the water pressure would be like when you get uh, 200 feet up. But it, it wouldn't, be, wouldn't be like it is, it wouldn't be what you need to wash down to. Oh, uh, are we getting the last big one? Nope. It's something you probably don't have, you hardly ever have to freaking think about, but it uses a lot of water. Wind shake water. For, oh, the, uh, cannons? Nope. Water cannons comes off the service water header. That does not use a lot of water, but that is totally. That is blow down tank. Correct. Quenching water for the blow down tank. So you you have 600 degree water that 
that is coming off of the, the boiler and it's flashing the steam and it's cooling off and then it goes down to the blowdown tank and it's basically 210 degrees by the time it's in there and then we add surface water to cool it down to 140 degrees before we pump it back to the pump 